which mustache is better. I like mine. We're going to show you how to choose deer hair. Fly fish food. How to choose deer hair. So that's a loaded question in my opinion. There are so many different types of deer hair or elk hair or caribou or any of that kind of stuff um, that it, it's kind of a broad thing depending on what fly you're tying. Uh, but I'm going to give you some general tips to choose better deer hair. And then the rest is up to you. All right, so I've got a few Primo deer hair strips that we'll use in just a second. But first of all, you're going to see that there are all different types of hair. So we have spinning deer hair. We have early season elk hair. We have stimulator deer hair. We have antelope hair. We have moose body hair. We have more spinning deer hair. We have a huge mega patch of select cow elk that even Peter Steen couldn't use for the rest of his life. We have comparadon hair. We have dyed bull elk. We have cow elk back strip, which I used to call back strap, and I would try to eat it. It was delicious. Ex caddis deer. Deer belly hair. And finally, select cow elk. That's one of my favorites. But how do you make sense of all this when all you want to do is tie an elk hair caddis? Well, we'll kind of run through some of the, the options here and, and help you choose a little bit better. All right, first and foremost, I, I wanted to get these out here because these are some good examples of what I look for in hair and what I don't look for in hair. So first of all, these are primo deer hair strips. People use these a lot for streamer heads or or deer hair type things. They're a little bit thicker deer hair and they're they're kind of thick along the shaft of the actual deer hair. So that's one of the things that I look for in, in a primo strip that I'm going to use for spinning like a slider head or something. Is something that when I squeeze down on it there's a little bit of bulk. So you can see this one is, is pretty thick there's a lot of, of kind of girth to this guy. Same with this one. It's a really thick piece of deer hair. Even though the actual fibers of deer hair on this one are much thinner than this one, this is still a good piece of hair that I would look for. This one, however, if you can look at that, it's very, very thin. And when I squeeze it, there's not a lot of cushion, which tells me that this hair maybe isn't as thick and, and hollow as these two other pieces of hair. So for this one, if I were using it for making heads on a slider or, or spinning hair, I'd probably avoid this piece of hair. However, if I were looking for, for hair that doesn't flare as easily, maybe for like stimulator tails or humpy uh, wings, I would maybe pick up this piece of hair because it's going to kind of stay exactly where I put it. Another thing to look for is if you, if you pull up the deer hair and run your finger along it, there are little tiny black tips on the deer hair. These black tips are fairly uniform. None of them are super, super long. The black tips are not going to aid the flotation of your fly at all. This one, however, has pretty long black tips. So that's another reason why maybe I would avoid this one for, for anything that I want to flare or, or float. So anyway, those are some, some tips in, in choosing Primo deer hair. Those are good for, again, like doing streamer heads and things like that. Next, let's, let's get some spinning deer hair. So this spinning deer hair is, is phenomenal from Nature Spirit, and it's actually a good all-purpose hair. The other thing you notice is they have both mule deer hair and whitetail hair. So if, if I pull this out of the package, I'm going to do my little test. If you can see the, the, the black tips aren't too big. They're, they're, they're hardly there at all. And also the other thing is to, to check the overall general length of this hair, you kind of look at the white tips on the hair and you can see that the white tips are fairly uniform. So a quick you know, stack in your hair evener and these are going to be ready to go. The other thing about the, this hair that I like is that the usable hair for spinning, or like a Goddard caddis or a bass bug, is the part underneath the white tip all the way to the to pelt. So if you can see on this, it's got a lot of usable hair to, to be spinning. So that 
that's a big deal on these. Um, the hair is also very, very straight. So this would make a really good section of hair to spin the deer. So moving on to what I think is the easiest hair to spin, but it's absolutely the most unruly hair on the planet, is deer belly hair. A lot of people ask, why can't I get a primo strip in white? It's because they would have to bleach it and the bleach, you know, you can get bleached primo strips, but to bleach it to the point where it's completely white, you'd wipe out all the durability of that hair and it would just totally break. So they use deer belly, which is naturally a white hair, and they dye it in all these crazy colors. So I picked this one out as a good patch of deer hair or a good patch of belly hair. And as you'll see, the fibers are a little bit curved. There's no black tip on this, this type of hair. But on this type of hair, what you're looking for is just maybe not a lot of curve and relatively straight fibers. All right, for, for belly hair though, this is, this is a pretty good patch. Um, the, the hairs are very, very coarse. And what, what, me, what that means is they're going to spin and flare very easily. Now don't be alarmed when you buy deer belly hair when the, pe when the pelt is rock hard. It's really hard to tan these, they're just like this. Another example of, of deer belly hair is this one. This is maybe a less ideal patch of hair because of how curved it is. The tips are kind of broken a little bit. You could definitely still use this, but it would be a lot, lot more of a pain to, to use this piece of hair. And again, the, the pelt is very, very stiff. So again, deer belly hair is great for really tightly packed hair, bass bugs, that type of stuff. Nature Spirit has hair that they call X caddis deer hair, uh, which, you know, is very specific to X caddis. You could use this for any caddis pattern though. But the idea here is that it's a very, very fine deer hair. So if you took some of this and wanted to spin it for a bass bug, it would be no good for that. But if you wanted to do like a size 16 or 18 X caddis or elk hair caddis, any of those types of things, this would be a great patch of hair to have. And even thinner than that is the Comparadun hair. So if you've ever tried to tie Comparaduns and you've got something like this, it's a huge pain in the butt. So if you look at this patch of hair, this is a really, really good patch of Comparadon hair. If you look at that white line across the top of the hair, it looks like they're almost evened up already. And if you pull it back and look for the little black tips, they're almost non-existent. Never is the black tip check more important than with Comparadon hair because you're going to have very small uh, lengths of hair coming out of your fly. So it's important that you get the most float out of your, your deer hair for a Comparadon fly. And you know, Comparadons you're tying anywhere from say size 12 down to size 20, but most commonly here in Utah you're fishing 18s and 16s. So anyway, some good Comparadon hair makes all the difference if you're trying to tie that fly. Okay, another hair from Nature Spirit is stimulator deer hair. So what is stimulator deer hair? As you can see, these are thinner fibers. They have really nice tips. But what this is going to do is when you tie in your stimulator wing, it's not going to flare like crazy. It's going to kind of just go over the back of your fly, which is exactly what you want with a stimulator. In fact, when I pull that up off the pelt, those fibers are almost lined up perfectly. Now, nature spirit, I think, to my knowledge, does the best job of sourcing their, their pelts that they turn into these products. And instead of just taking any random chunk of deer hair and throwing it in a bag and just calling it deer hair, they're nice enough to take the different parts of the deer and the different species of deer and the different deer from, from parts of the United States that may have different coats and they separate them out, they dye them in really cool colors like this gold for flies like stimulators. So kudos to you, Nature Spirit. You can also get hopper hair, humpy hair, all that type of stuff. So let's move into elk hair. Uh, my favorite is just their select cow elk. If I had to tie humpies, 
elk hair caddis, stimulators, and I just had to choose one type of hair, it would for sure be the select cow elk. So as you can see, elk hair typically has a dark shaft and it goes up into a lighter colored um, tip section. Now, the, you can also do the, the check for black tips on your deer hair. And if you can see this one, it's got almost no black tip going on. All right, so what I like about this hair is it's kind of a medium thickness elk hair that, that flares nicely if you want it. If you want it to lay down, you can use a little bit less thread wraps, but just a very, very good overall elk hair. It's probably our top seller. So much so that Nature Spirit started making it in this beast of a pack. So this is a bleached one, obviously. The bleach looks really good. You can also get this in a natural color. Early season elk hair. So this is a shorter, finer hair. This is for patterns where you, you might not want the hair to, to flare a whole lot and you just need a little tiny chunk of it. I mean, this would be good for like humpy wings or a humpy tail or any type of fly that has, has a tail of hair. Okay, another type of hair, um, the dyed bull elk hair. Bull elk is really good for, for longer wings, like if you're tying salmon fly patterns, or this one would be good for like bullet heads on hoppers, where you want it to flare a little bit, but not a ton. You're gonna find that this hair's a little bit more coarse, not as hollow. Uh, it can have a little bit of longer black tips on it, but it's, it's designed for, for bigger flies, maybe for wings or bullet heads or things like that. Same with the, the cow elk back strip. So this is another hair that's, that's longer, ideal for, for bigger flies. So big salmon flies where you want some of that going down the back of it or, or a big bullet head or a big hopper. This one wouldn't be ideal for spinning because it's not going to flare very much. Um, and then we're going to move into one of the easiest hairs to flare, which would be antelope. It's a really cool hair uh, because it's relatively straight with just a little bit of crinkle. And uh, the thing that you need to know about antelope, though, is that it, most of the tips are broken off. So you, if you're tying caddis patterns, they're going to float pretty well, but the tips are completely gone, so they're not going to look very good. The other thing is it's not a very durable hair. So as you fish it, it can kind of break off, or if you pull too, too hard down on your thread, it can break off. Um, but it's actually a really good hair to learn how to spin deer hair with because it's so easy to work with. And then finally we have moose, which is in the, the same family. So this is a bleached moose body hair. It's actually a really cool type of hair to work with. It's really durable and, and tough. I usually use it for tails on mayflies, or you can take individual strands of moose and wrap it for the body of a fly and then just put like resin over the top. But this is not going to flare. It's a relatively straight, long fiber. And you can find moose in, in multiple different varieties. Again, this is a bleached version, so not, not the most common moose that you'll see. All right, lastly, we're going to talk about the underfluff, or the underfur of the deer. So you've got the hair, which is what you want to tie with. If I take the butts and brush them out, I'm going to get some of this underfluff. And what happens with the underfluff is it, it absorbs water. So you want to get that out of there as much as possible. So that's another thing to look for when you're looking for deer hair. For example, this one, if you look at the sides, it looks like it has quite a bit of underfluff. Uh, so it's not the, not the end of the world. It just means you're going to have to clean it more when you tie flies. If I'm looking, I am also going to try to look for hair that doesn't have a crazy amount of underfur. Uh, this, this chartreuse one looks like it's, it's got a manageable amount of it. So anyway, as you can see, there are all kinds of types of, of hair to use. And hopefully this is a, a good kind of guide for you to choose which hair to put on your hooks.